Welcome to Inside City Hall. I'm your host, Mayor Darrell Seymour, and my guests today are Tamara Reedhead, Deputy City Clerk, and Tony Turley, Administrative Services Director for the City of Sholo. Welcome, Tamara. Thank you. Glad to have you. Tony, great Thank to you have are. you again on our show. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the upcoming election that we have, our primary election. It's a different time of year than we've had before. Tamara, share with us when that election will be and what we can expect to see on the ballot. Okay, well, first of all, um, there are some major changes to the state election laws as of last year, which created consolidated elections. The city is now required to hold elections for the city council in the fall of even numbered years, not in the spring as we used to do. Um, since our city election is now consolidated with federal, state, and county elections, it will be a traditional walk-in election. Voters will have to go to the polling place, which is um, in Sholo is the Navajo County Health, De Health Building on, located on Ninth Place, and they will be uh, required to present valid identifications at the polls. Or um, if they don't want to go to the polls, they can request an early ballot, which will come in the mail from Navajo County. Our council members are nonpartisan, which means they do not declare any um, party affiliation and their names will appear on all, uh, on all primary election ballots at the end of all the other races. Arizona is an open primary state. Voters who are independent or who have not designated a political party on their voter registration forms can still vote in the August 26th primary. All they have to do is call Navajo County Voter Registration at 800-668-3867 to request a primary ballot for either the Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, or Americans elect party, or they can choose to ask for a city-only ballot. Um, as far as what's on the ballot, our, like we said, the election is August 26th. There are three seats for the standard four years, one council seat for a two-year term to be filled because of a death, and there will be one ballot proposition. Three candidates are running for the three council seats. Uh, incumbent council member Mike Alsup, Brent Hatch, and John Leach Jr. And then one current council member, Gene Kelly, is running for the two-year term. Now all of these council members, uh, it's one of the rare times they're all running unopposed. Is that right. correct? That's correct. So, so those are the only names you'll see on the ballot, Sarah. That's correct. The ballot proposition, as we spoke about earlier, is to readopt the alternative expenditure limitation or home rule option, which Tony will explain in greater detail in a few minutes. Okay. Now, most generally, there'll only probably be just the primary election, this one-time election this time. Well, that's possible. I mean, um, there's, well, it depends on what happens at the primary if there will be a general election. But state law provides for a method to calculate the votes and determine who wins. And it's very likely that all candidates will win at the primary election. Okay. So, but uh, the ballot proposition for the home rule option will be de will be decided at the primary election. Now, is there anything that that people can learn more about these candidates or, or anything? Yes, um, the Chamber of Commerce, the Sholo Chamber of Commerce, is sponsoring a candidate forum on Thursday, July 31st at 6 p.m. in the council chambers. The debate will be broadcast live on City Four and then will be rebroadcast re in the special events time slot on City 4. Citizens can attend in person if they choose. And then also our quarterly city newsletter that will go out um, in the utility bills starting um, July 1st. They will also have an article in there about the upcoming election. Great. Now, if somebody hasn't registered to vote, uh, is there still time for them to be able to register? And how would they go about that? Yes, the last day to register to vote in the August 26th primary is July 28th. Voters who have moved to a different location, to a different physical address, change their names perhaps because of divorce or marriage, or want to change their party affiliation must re-register by the July 28th deadline. And we do have voter registration forms available at City Hall in the lobby. Okay. If you've never got a early ballot but want to have an early ballot at this time due to maybe you're going to be out of town or something, mm -hmm. 
How would you request that and when are those early ballots due back? Early ballots will be mailed by Navajo County beginning July 31st and voters can still request an early ballot until August 15th by calling the 800 number again that's 800-668-3867 and all ballots must be received by the county by the August 26th election, or they can be dropped off at any polling place on election day, which the polls will remain open until 7 p.m. on Great. election day. Well, thanks for that information, I appreciate it. Sure. Tony, let's turn to you for a minute here. We're gonna have the alternative expenditure, the other item on that ballot uh, rule that will be also known as home rule. Let's talk a little bit about what home rule is and try to explain that to our viewers. Well, in, in 1980, um, the Arizona legislature adopted a, the, a constitutional amendment that required a balanced budget and also um, expenditure limit, state imposed expenditure limitations on cities and, and counties. Um, we, it, but the, in that, in that um, amendment, they also left options for how a city could, could adopt alternatives to that state imposed limitation. And, in 1996, City of Sholo adopted an alternative expenditure limitation, which allows for what we know as home rule, so that we can budget, or that the city council can budget the expenditures based on the revenue that they receive from from the multitude of sources that we receive revenue from. And so, every year, every four years, we're required to go back to the to the voters every four years to readopt that alternative expenditure limitation and the citizens of Sholo have passed that every four years. This year as as Tam pointed out because of the change in the election laws we actually are going back um, after two years um, to adopt an alternative expenditure limitation because of that change in the in the laws. Okay now if uh just help me understand here, a change of home rule, is it a tax uh, to the citizens or, or is home rule not any tax? It actually has no impact on the taxes for the citizens of Sholo. It's, it's, a, it's a zero impact. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't raise taxes and it doesn't lower the taxes. Uh, the taxes remain the same. All it changes is the expenditure side. Okay. The other thing that if the council wanted to impose a new tax, uh, say we wanted to raise the sales tax in, in the city, having home rule, it does put some limitation that we do require to have a 75% of the council vote, a super majority. So there is some restriction on the council. If they try to increase taxes in the community, it would take a super majority for that to happen. That is correct. Okay. The other thing that with home rule, there is a self-imposed restriction that we do have to keep a million dollars in a excess fund at all times. That is correct. That is the, the, what we have put in place. The city has gone beyond that and, and has a reserve budgeted in and, and can, will continue to look to have a reserve of two months of operating income, which in this case is about 2.6 million, so well above the one million um, requirement. Okay. So having a yes vote on the alternative expenditure allows the city to spend the revenues or budget the revenues as long as we have a balanced budget uh, through the year like we have operated for the past 12 years under home rule it, because we take in far above what the state requires or the state limitation that allows us to spend. So in essence, if the state limits us to 17 million, but we take in 20 or 30 million dollars of revenue, we would not be able to spend that excess revenue because the state has imposed a limitation on us. That is correct. Okay. And so that's one of the things that's difficult back in 1978, this is when it was proposed, and the size of the city was around, what, 3,800 people at that time? That's correct. And so with this, now, do other cities have home rule or, or something similar? What are the percentages that other cities and towns in, in the state of Arizona? Um, about 90% of, of cities have an alternative form of um, expenditure limitation. There's, there's actually two different forms. There's a, a permanent base adjustment, which the city of Sholo is not operating under. That's, a, that's changing permanently that, that base that the state imposed back in 1980. Um, we have passed the alternative expenditure limitation, which we have to do every four years. And so by, by passing that, 
I'm sorry, repeat the question. I, I lost a little bit of train of thought, I'm sorry. I was just saying that, that because of our, our population growth that we do have, and then how many cities and states are, are on home row right now. So, so between the permanent base adjustment and the alternative expenditure limitation, about 90% of the cities have a chosen alternative form of expenditure. Okay. What are, what are the revenue collections on an average year in the city of Sholo? Um, our revenue collections um, are about 33 million from operating revenues. Then on top of that, you would have grants that come into play um, and then also resources that are available that take the budget up to the 50 million that we would look at under revenues for alternative expenditure limitations is all the, the fund balance that's carried forward as well. Okay, so I just want to reiterate a couple of items here that voting yes or no has no impact on current taxes or fees. And then under the state limitation, the city's budget could not exceed 17.2 million, but under home rule, the city's budget is estimated close to 50.5 million. That is as correct. just a rule of thumb as yes. we have here, okay, on that. Anything else you'd like to share uh, with that? I think that, you know, some of the important things that that we look at as we do this is it allows the citizens of Sholo through their elected officials to determine the spending level of the city and the services that they want to receive. Well, let's talk now a little bit if we can about the city's budget that we have coming up. Well, I know we just approved that uh, recently at, at our last uh, city council meeting, but let's talk a little bit about budget here, okay? Yes, that sounds good. So go ahead and share with us uh, what we have proposed here for this coming year. We, we have an operating budget of 60 million, um, just a little over 60 million, 60 million, 89,000. Um, that includes capital expenditures and it also includes the reserves that we, that we talked about earlier. The, the city has reserves in all of its, um, fun, or in, in many of its funds, um, especially those that are, have operating income. Okay, now I'm gonna stop you right here. We just got through saying that we, we bring in about $33 million and we have a little bit of extra, but now you're telling me we have a $60 million budget. Let's explain why our budget is going to be 60 million when we only bring in revenues of 33 or 40. Okay, um, part of what we've talked about, one of the big differences, when we talked about the alternative expenditure limitation a minute ago, we talked about a $50 million budget. So let me try and explain the difference between the 50 mil 60 million and the 50 million. We have been for years saving up money to do a wastewater treatment plant expansion. And that expansion is gonna be a little over 10 million. The city has saved up money over the years of about 7 million of that 10 million. And so that revenue carry forward, or budget carry, not budget, but fund balance carry forward has been carried forward in our wastewater fund over a number of years in preparation for doing that plant expansion. In this case, we also need to budget for a revenue to, to make up the difference or a bond sell to sell bonds for the additional three million that we need to finish that wastewater treatment expansion. All of that 10 million is, is budgeted to be spent in this fiscal year. Mm. Um, there are other capital items that we are budgeting that would make up a difference that also require a bond type sell. Um, the expansion or the, the purchase of the land, which we were able to pay cash for, for the land and building for the new um, public safety building, needs tenant improvements. And that's going to be approximately $3 million in bond revenue that we would then so, so the bond revenue becomes one-time revenue. It's not an ongoing operating revenue. So those two projects help take that expenditure limit up to the 60 million. And so then we have grants that we come into play. Um, grants through the, the aviation, through the Federal Aviation Administration for the airport um, and projects that we have going on there. We have federal grants that help offset some of the road projects that we do. And so those additional forms of revenue are in addition to that operating revenue that we have and then our, in our fund balance. Okay. So we can't spend it unless we really have a budget for it. And some of these monies are monies that we've saved up over a long period of time and we just carry those forward into the current budget. For those specific projects that the, that the council has deemed we need to carry that money forward okay. for. Okay, great. Let's talk about some of the other budget items that you have here. Okay. Um, 
Well, just a, a look, one of the things that's key is a budget to actual. Um, you know, we budget, at, we're budgeted at the 60 million. This last year we were budgeted at 62 million in, in the current fiscal year that's just ending today. The actual expenditure that we expect from this year's budget um, for 14 is that we're going to end up at approximately 43 million. So we, we've, we've, again, we, we budget for carry forward, we budget for savings, and especially for projects that we intend to carry forward. Um, not all the capital projects that we budget every year are, we're able to get to, um, especially some of those that we're dependent on other agencies like ADOT to do some of those projects. Sometimes they have them budgeted in, but they get pushed out um, year over year, and so those, we rebudget those in, in future fiscal years. But we, we've historically budgeted um, to, or, or we expect that we're going to underspend our budget. Um, again, that's fiscal responsibility um, that we would look at. Um, you know, we, the, we, looking at revenues this year, we're going to have a beginning balance in 15 of about 17.6 million that's carry forward, just in fund balance carry forward. Other financing sources we talked about, we have about 10 million that we're looking at. Three million for the wastewater treatment plant, three million for the public safety building. And then we budget that we're, we have an active grant program, grant writing program, and we're out looking for grants. The problem is if we get the grant revenue and we don't have the expenditure budgeted, we can't do anything with it. And so we budget an unanticipated revenue and expenditure for those grants that, that we try and have come in. And so we have about four million budgeted for those. Um, How of our uh, revenues in comparison to previous years? Uh, we're we're kind of seeing ourselves come a little bit out of this recession. How are our revenues doing, tracking uh, compared to last year or or the last four or five years? Fiscal year fourteen um, is up about seven, a little over seven percent for the. Well, overall for revenue, but specifically for the local sales tax, which is the primary local source of revenue that we have. So we're about 8% over. We're, we're budgeting. Um, again, we use a conservative budget approach. Rather than budgeting 100% of what we think the revenue is going to be, we have used the approach that we're going to budget at 95%. There, if, then if anything comes up and we have a shortfall, we're covered in our budget. And so we're budgeting that local sales tax number to be at a little over 9.1 million. Um, our, our collections through the end of May were actually just under 9 million, so we're going to, we're going to exceed um, those collections significantly in this fiscal year, and, and we anticipate that those will continue to grow. The state shared revenue, um, we're looking at that being up about 8% in fiscal year 15 over 14. Okay because they're starting to trickle back a little bit of the money that uh, they held back from us. Yes, okay. um, we did get a little bit more of the HERF, the, the Highway User Fund. Um, we, we got some money back from what they had taken back in previous years, not all of it, but um, about $56,000 in additional revenue in 15 that we didn't have in 14 for, for the Highway User Fund. Great. Share with us how our utilities are going and, and also intergovernmental items here. Intergovernmental, um, that's where we get into some of the grant revenue. Um, we have about $3.6 million budgeted at the airport for grants and activities out there. Um, we have some smaller um, revenue grants from in the police department and the transit um, department, and then NACOG does a pass-through on some items as well. Our utility fees, um, we're budgeting at about 6.5 million. That would be 3.4 million for wastewater, or for water, excuse me, 2.2 million in wastewater. And then where we, we see an impact is in sanitation. We're um, just under a million in sanitation, and that's a decrease um, because of the competitive bid process that we did with um, the refuse hauling. Um, we were able to drop the fees to the citizens by a little over $3. Um, that they will see impacted on their bill as it comes out for July, which would be the August 1st bill, would be for July activity. So I know a few years ago we raised at about $3.35 when we added our uh, recycle, and now we're basically giving a portion of that 
$3.30 back, and then we're also increasing our recycling every week. That is correct. So that's been a real real win-win situation for, for us and the citizens. It is, and you know, we listened to the citizen feedback that we received that the every other week recycling was hard to remember, or hard to know which week you were supposed to have it out. It was confusing for the citizens. And so we put in our bid package an alternative to, to see what the price would be for that every week recycling. And we were very pleased that in, in, even with the every week recycling, we were able to reduce the, the fees to the citizens by the $3. That's great. We've got about five minutes here, so let's cover some of the items. Uh, maybe let's get into parks and recreation and some other things that maybe, I know we're losing our fines and forfeitures uh, with photo enforcement. That's going to reduce drastically here. We won't uh, beat a dead horse anymore there, but talk about some of the other items that uh, maybe will impact our citizens here. Well, you know, we did the, the pool, we had, again, feedback from the citizens that on the days during high, when the high school has an early release, that it would be a good idea to have the aquatic center open um, earlier on those Thursdays. So we put in additional hours in the budget so that the aquatic center could be open um, Thursday afternoons um, starting at one o'clock. So extended hours so that um, the, the children in, in the community and the young, young adults in the community would have something to do on those days when they're released early from, from school. So we have money in there for that. Um, you know, our debt service is about the same. Our operational expenditures are about 10.8 million. Um, we, we have some significant, well again, the biggest projects in the wastewater area is, is spending money on that wastewater treatment plant. Um, we have that coming up. We have, you know, we've list, again listened to citizens. We are doing on um, the Sholo Heights. We're resurfacing the roads. That's going to be a two-year project. We'll do half of, of the roads in that um, subdivision will be done in fiscal year 15. The other half will be done in fiscal year 16. Um, those roads were in pretty bad shape and we, and we you know, re are responding to those. So they'll be completely new roads, curb and gutter. In, in that subdivision as we go forward. That's great, as well as we're completing a, or starting here on Whipple as well, which will, will be a great impact there. Some of the things that we have, uh, a lot of times people ask, well, what are our major items in the budget? What is our biggest expenditure? And I believe we probably have that in the police department and then also in personnel. So what are those numbers of, say, just the police department and then our, our personnel? I know at one time we used to have about 172 employees uh, with the city, and I think we're down somewhere around about 157 now. That, that's like correct. That. Um, I don't have the dollar amounts um, specifically for those areas. Well, I, actually, I guess I do. Um, no, those are contingencies. I can tell you that 33% of our budget is spent on public safety. Um, we have 17% is spent on utilities. Um, community services, which includes parks and recreation, um, is 23%. That also includes the library, which we have a very nice library. Um, public works is another 14%, and that's the, the water, sewer, and streets, um, keeping up with those things. And you could almost include some, almost all of that in public safety as well, because right. they, they go into to keeping the citizens healthy and safe. Um, if we didn't have a clean water supply, we would have more problems than we, than we have, and so that's very important. Um, only 10% only is for the, for the general government. So, I mean, that's a pretty good low overhead, um, considering that most of the things are put into services. And then about 3% is in planning and zoning. Great. Well, it's one of those things that the budget is always a complicated process. And as the city grows, it's great to know that we're fiscally sound and that we've been able to use really good conservative measures uh, throughout. It's one of those things that I, I wish at some point in time we could get our budget to a two-year budget or a five-year budget and be able to, instead of every year, but what works, it works too, and it's been real great. It's been great having both of you today on our show. I appreciate the opportunity of discussing these items with you and, and being able to go through these other processes. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mayor. Camera, thank you. Thanks for joining us on Inside City Hall today. If you have questions you'd like answered, please call them into the city hall at 532-4061 and we'll answer them here on the show. Thanks for watching and have a great day.